Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, a liberal, will reportedly retire from the bench this summer. No official word from Breyer himself, but his retirement gives President Biden an opening he has pledged to fill by naming the first black woman to the nation's highest court. Breyer will turn 84 in August. He has been a Supreme Court justice since 1994, appointed by President Clinton. Breyer's departure won't change the 6-3 to three conservative advantage on the court. Chicago Kent College of Law professor Carolyn Shapiro, clerk for Justice Breyer. She joins us now live. Thanks for joining us, Carolyn. What do you think about uh, the retirement? Does it surprise you or is it something you expected? Well, it doesn't surprise me in a general sense. I mean, he's 83. He uh, it, 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 he's definitely was concerned, I think, although I don't have this as inside information that he not die uh, on the bench or in, in office. Um, but uh, I w didn't know that it was going to happen now. I actually was expecting it probably later in the spring. Well, you're part of that small group that, that clerked for the justice here. You said that he did a lot of his thinking out loud. Can I ask, what did yes. you learn in that process? Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I learned, first of all, how, it, for him, how curious a mind he had. He always wanted to know about the world. He wanted to know about the facts surrounding the cases, about the potential effect the cases would have in the world. And he... Uh, and th that was in that was incredibly important to him uh, as as a justice to think about uh, the, the the reality that these cases aren't decided in an intellectual vacuum. They are going to affect not just the individuals involved in the cases, but really the entire country. And and he had a commitment to an effective and responsive democratic government. And that was really how he thought about the role of the court was to facilitate that effective and responsive democratic government. So what will the court be losing with his retirement and who should, what type of person should be putting in his place? Of course he's irreplaceable, but what type of, of uh, justice <laughs> should be put in his place? Well, uh, the court has a, right now a very strong six to three, highly conservative majority. And that's not gonna change. Mm -hmm. He's um, among the three in the in the minority and whoever replaces him undoubtedly will also be on the left and therefore also uh, in the minority. I think it's important to have somebody come in who like Justice Breyer is willing to give voice to a very uh, profound vision of the constitution that differs from the majority's vision. The, the conservative majority has a vision of the constitution that is based on a, a sort of set of kind of narrow and technical um, and often uh, d uh, narrow and technical readings that often undermine the ability of the federal government to operate. Now, there are a variety of different ways of thinking about the Constitution and their different visions, and whoever comes in will have their own view. But I doubt very much it will be consistent with the majority's view, and it's going to be very important for them to give voice to that, to give voice to the co commitments to equality and democracy and effective governance, which are all things that Justice Breyer cared deeply about as well. Some liberal groups had uh, pushed for Breyer to retire now, uh, you know, in advance of when the Republicans might take over in Congress here. What did you think of that effort, and what do you think he thought of it? I think he probably hated it. Uh, if anything, I think it was counterproductive. He really des desperately did not want people to see the court, does not want people to see the court as a partisan institution. And so being pressured from the left to retire undoubtedly made him concerned that that retirement itself was becoming and would be seen as a partisan effort and that was something he really disapproved of very much as you know during the presidential campaign ruth bader justice ruth bader ginsburg died and the president said that he she should have been replaced with another liberal uh, justice and he vowed to appoint a black woman to the supreme court mm -hmm. what do you think about that well it would be lovely and any ideas be, by the way there, uh, I think the Supreme Court is in sore need of a more representative composition than it currently has. So uh, a woman of color, a black woman, would be a terrific addition in that sense. And there are some truly outstanding 
possible candidates out there. Uh, one name that gets thrown around a lot is Justice Leandra Kruger, who's a justice on the California Supreme Court. Another is Judge uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, who is currently an appeals court judge on the DC Circuit in Washington, DC, and also was a former Breyer clerk. Uh, those two, and there are others as well, would make a, make phenomenal justices. And uh, the president has actually put in uh, appointed more black women, I think, that to the bench in an incredibly short period of time than any other president. So there's a wealth of phenomenal candidates who would bring these very different perspectives. And it's important to note many of them, including J J Judge Jackson, have served as public defenders, uh, which is not a perspective that we currently have on the court at all and would be very valuable. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insight on Justice Breyer and uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Chicago Kent College Law Professor Carolyn Shapiro, be safe, be well. Thank you.